Okay, je compris. Okay. Okay. Welcome everybody. Today we have Andre Smirga from Nantes, but I understand he moved a little bit now. Um, I'm and uh, I hope you know him. He has been speaking in the seminar series before. And whenever you are ready, Andre, you tell us about non commutative quantum mechanical systems associated with Lie algebras. Okay, Andreas. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk here. Well, the subject of my talk is doesn't quite confirm to uh, the main uh, well, subject of the seminar, but you will see at the end. Could you please all mute yourself? We are having a lot of background noise. Okay. Okay. So I mean, uh, 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 it's not commutative quantum mechanics. It's something uh, actually very simple, but it's not mostly not about well uh, non-Hermitian, pseudo-Hermitian Hamiltonians. But in the end of the talk, I will show you some non-Hermitian Hamiltonian, which is related to what I'm going to tell you. So that's how my talk uh, relates to the main line of the seminar. Uh, so, uh, uh, what is it all about? Mm, you know, there is a rather, uh, how to say, mm, a topic which many people uh, were interested in doing, maybe not so much now, namely non commutative field theory. And I have nothing to say about non commutative field theory. It's a non local theory. Uh, well, uh, and so my talk is not about that. Uh, but in non commutative field theory, what it, uh, doesn't commute are just the coordinates, uh, uh, spatial and more bit time coordinates, and uh, the fields just depend on these coordinates, which don't commute. And there is another subject. Uh, non commutative quantum mechanics. It's when uh, uh, non commutative entities are dynamical variables of the system. It's not field theory where you have an infinite number of uh, dynamic variables. It's just a fine, here you could just ha have a finite number of dynamic variables which don't commute. And so my main message is that non commutative quantum mechanics is the same as ordinary commutative quantum mechanics, yeah, just, well, if you look at it with a proper angle. That's my main message. Uh, also, I know that, uh, well, many people um, started this question, including Andreas. He published papers about that. Uh, but, well, let me tell you what I think uh, uh, is relevant here. So that's... Uh, what I already said, non-commutative field theory is, I will not touch it. And non-commutative quantum mechanics, well, started well 20 years ago with these papers, and there are many other papers uh, devoted to this subject. Uh, so uh, as a byproduct, I will derive some, uh, I'm using formulas for, for the metric on group manifolds on, on the spheres. That's just some byproduct. But the main statement is that uh, non commutative is the same as commutative, actually. And so let's consider I... the simplest example. May the I simplest... ask a question? Huh? May I ask a historical question? Maybe, yes, you're, sure. going... Maybe you're just going to say uh, Lando, Lando's problem is an older. Uh, 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 realization of your idea, no? Uh, yes, yes, exactly. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. Look at the, the slide, right? You're right, Joshua. Exactly. That's the simplest example. Uh, so suppose you have. And it two... goes further back than 20 years. <laughs> yes. yes. The original yes. idea uh, is from uh, Heisenberg. It's I still from Heisenberg. A, a reference that's the paper uh, when. Well, okay, let me tell it. So that's the reference, right? It's uh, not 20 years, a little bit less, but uh, that's the paper where it was formulated explicitly. What was formulated explicitly? So you have two variables, X and Y, right? And suppose they, uh, that they don't commute. 
but uh, in your face space, you have also momenta, derivatives. And uh, that's the full algebra. Momenta commute uh, between themselves, and they commute in a usual way with coordinates. And the basic idea is that you uh, better consider the system in momentum representation. That is, uh, you, uh, uh, well, instead of um, the momenta, you call them large x, and uh, large x already commute. And x, small x and y don't commute, but they can be represented as differential operators of the velocities, right? Uh, x component and y component of the velocity. And then everything is uh, very simple. Uh, well, that's the algebra, that's uh, the quantum phase space, but then you should write some Hamiltonian. And if you write it in a natural way, just sum of the squared of these velocities, and earlier that was x and y, x squared plus y squared, uh, that's the most natural uh, option. Then uh, this Hamiltonian just describes the motion in homogeneous magnetic field as Joshua mentioned. So it's something very simple. Uh, you can do similar construction when you have many coordinates and they commute like that. So it's some antisymmetric matrix. Uh, then also, well, uh, you can diagonalize this matrix and also you obtain something like multidimensional magnetic field. But more, uh, a uh, little bit more complicated case is when uh, uh, the coordinates, co commutator of the co uh, coordinates is not a number or a set of numbers, but it also depends on x. And that's uh, uh, the example, right? Uh, the uh, x and uh, well, there are several x's and they commute and uh, the commutator is, uh, uh, well, uh, is, uh, um, uh, FABC XT or FABC a structure constant of some algebra. So how I uh, started to uh, be interested in that? The story is the following. Uh, I live now, as uh, Andre, Andreas mentioned, not in Nantes, but I live uh, near Paris and uh, close to this Institute of High uh, Horitude uh, Scientific in Bursarevet. And so I go there from time to time. And I met there a mathematician, Dmitry Gurevich. And he told me about what he is doing, and he is doing non commutative geometry. And so I got interested. He showed me this relation. I found it beautiful. And uh, well, um, I uh, uh, tried to understand what it is. And so I understood it, but in my own way. He, uh, being a mathematician, understands it in quite different ways. So there are some constructions. Well, he tried to teach me co-product, for example. Uh, he taught me uh, eventually what is it, but uh, probably uh, I'm not so sure anymore. And uh, then, uh, well, uh, I well understood it in my own way. And he, Dmitry Gurevich, actually didn't like it. He said he made it too simple and that there are some beautiful constructions which you uh, don't put any attention. Well, okay. So suppose uh, the coordinates commute like that. Then it uh, turns out that it's not possible to postulate the commutator of derivatives in a usual way. Because in this uh, case, uh, the algebra uh, cannot be closed. Jacobi identities are not fulfilled. So you should write something else something more complicated. And it's known, well, mathematicians well found out what, what one uh, should write. So uh, the only thing what I am doing is interpreting results obtained by mathematician in a way which I, I can understand. So there is no much new in what I, well, there are some new formulas I will uh, tell you, but mostly I am just interpret interpreting uh, some results which are known to mathematicians. Anyway, these people uh, 15 years ago 
they uh, understood that the algebra can be closed uh, with this basic permutation if you introduce some generalized derivative, not usual derivative, but some generalized derivative uh, d tilde, right? And this generalized derivative, uh, the commutator with coordinates is complicated. It's an infinite series of derivatives also. Uh, so this F is a matrix, right? So uh, uh, this commutator is a matrix. Well, it carries indices A and B, and F is also a matrix. And so if you expand it, you obtain uh, the series uh, with the coefficients which are Bernoulli numbers. Uh, and that's an infinite series in derivative, something uh, rather fearful, well, infinite series in derivative. But if you uh, uh, just go to the momentum representation, then it becomes more simple. So uh, you just denote this generalized derivative as new coordinates, they commute. And uh, what used to be uh, small uh, x, small coordinates, are now some linear differential operator, not infinite series of, uh, of derivatives, but just an uh, linear differential operator with coefficient, uh, well, which is a matrix, which is some function of x, but it's just a function of x, matrix function of x. So that's just differential operator. Now, uh, what kind of differential operator uh, it is. Uh, so uh, it just uh, turns out it just a, a generator of group rotations, nothing else. Uh, they satisfy, so, uh, well, it's old X, right? So X uh, satisfied this commutation relation. And so uh, our differential operators also satisfy this commutation relation, like for uh, some uh, group, right? And so this uh, D are group rotations, for example, left group rotations. Uh, so how to prove this? So why uh, this particular uh, uh, structure appears in the coefficient of this differential operator? So uh, represent a group element. So suppose you have a simple group and the simplest case, non-trivial case is SU2, right? Uh, represent the group element in a usual way and large X are new coordinates and former they were momentum. And so you perform uh, infinitesimal group rotation, right? And after that, you obtain a new group element. And the question is how uh, this shift uh, of uh, the coordinates x is related to a small epsilon by which you multiply it. And that's basically uh, uh, the problem which also well, is known uh, solved a long time ago by mathematicians. So how uh, represent the product of uh, two group elements as another group element. And what is the logarithm of this new group element? And uh, well, it just uh, turns out that this delta x is related to epsilon in this way. Uh, well, Bernoulli numbers, probably I will show it to you. The first Bernoulli number is just one. Then there are some other uh, coefficients, but in the leading approximation, you just have delta x is equal to epsilon, right? That's uh, the first order, not an epsilon, an epsilon it's linear, but in large x, and then there are all the other terms in x. So uh, this problem, how to multiply group elements also is known to mathematicians. And so there is a formula uh, derived by these um, uh, people. So final uh, uh, touch to this problem was done by Evgeny Dinkin in, this, in the middle of the 40s, right? But at that time in the 40s, also physicists started to uh, be interested in that. 
and they were uh, two physics papers by Schwinger and by Feynman, right? Uh, so what, why they were interested in that? They were interested with the evolution operator uh, after perturbation, right? Suppose you have some uh, uh, free Hamiltonian H naught, and then there is some perturbation. And you want to find the evolution operator uh, uh, as a perturbation in V, right? And so you write the exponential as this limit, that's the formula from first year of university, first calculus. And then you just uh, insert V for each uh, factor, right? You can insert it in any place. And then you obtain this formula. And then you can integrate over T prime. And if you integrate over T prime, you obtain uh, just the infinite series, uh, uh, well, it's first order in V, on the first order in V, though you can also can derive uh, any order in V. That's the general, uh, this Baker, other people formula. But uh, I'm interested only in the first order in V, and you have an infinite series by these uh, nested commutators, right? And so, uh, uh, if you know that, you can ex and compare it with what you are interested in. You can express this delta x via epsilon. Uh, epsilon via delta x and then delta x via epsilon. And if you do that, then you derive exactly this formula which I wrote to you. Uh, so, uh, if you choose some natural Hamiltonian, uh, well, that's the most simple Hamiltonian. You can ask what physical problem or mathematical problem does it describe? And it describes uh, the motion of a particle over the group manifold. Uh, uh, so uh, I will uh, prove it a little bit later. Uh, do you have questions at this point, please? If you have some questions now. Everything is clear. Okay, good. So uh, uh, that's good. Uh, ah, Philip uh, has a question. Philip wants to ask. Yes, okay. Yes, uh, yes. Good morning, Andre. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to know the the original parameter theta is to be a C number. Yes, yes. And uh, 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 I consider now another problem where it's not C number, but it's the function of x. Uh, okay, and what seems that when you threw theta disappears from any final expression. What disappeared from final? Of, I mean, of, does, does anything in the end depend on theta? Wasn't that Hamiltonian? Problem. There is no uh, theta. Ah, well, okay. Yes, of course. Here theta, yes, okay. Okay. Here but, is. Uh, I just asked this because the Hamiltonian you wrote right at the beginning uh, with the two velocity squared didn't depend on theta. Uh, the Hamiltonian uh, depended on uh, theta via, uh, in this simplest problem, uh, yes. this uh, Vx involved theta, its magnetic field was, right? And now it's another theta, uh, it multiplies the structure FABC XC. And uh, the Hamiltonian de depends on theta because these differential operators also involve the dependence on theta, right? Okay. Well, well I'm, I'm just waiting for you. In the end, you want to say that it looks like a conventional quantum mechanics, but it would have to be quantum, conventional quantum mechanics that depends on theta in some way. The Hamiltonian depends on theta, yeah. yes. Okay. That'll be and, uh, this theta uh, will have an interpretation. I told you that uh, it's a motion of the group manifold. And the inverse heat is the inverse size of the manifold. So in the simplest case, uh, for SU2 algebra, it's a motion of SU2 group, which is three sphere, and theta is the inverse radius of the sphere. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's the Hamiltonian quantum Hamiltonian, and the classical Hamiltonian's classical counterpart. Uh, well, can be written in this way. So it's a metric, 
on some manifold, which uh, I will prove it to you. It's a group manifold as the main statement. And this uh, metric is the convolution of uh, these uh, uh, matrices. And so these matrices uh, are uh, nothing else but uh, field binds. So uh, these matrices are field binds in some particular well choice. Well, field binds uh, can be chosen in different way. So it's some particular choice for field binds. But if they, uh, you can value them, you obtain some metric uh, in some coordinates. Well, uh, the, these are field binds. The convolution gives you the metric. And uh, so I will show that it's the metric of, on the group manifold. Uh, well, how to show that? Uh, that's the canonical metric on group manifold. So you have omega that's group element, right? Uh, and uh, so it involves this theta, but uh, uh, well, it is going to be the size related to the size of the manifold. Now H is Dinkin index. So it's just normalization. Uh, well, it's that uh, for uh, the first term, linear term uh, at uh, point x equals zero in group unity, the metric is just delta Kronecker symbol. That's normalization. So what is invariant metric? It's invariant metric. What does it mean? It means that the distance between uh, a group element and a neighboring element uh, between uh, uh, is the same as uh, after you perform a group rotation. So you take some uh, group element and a neighboring group element. And then if you multiply it by some other element, for example, by omega minus one, you obtain something close to unity on the left-hand side, if you want, and just the unity, uh, uh, group unity at the right-hand side. And so the only uh, uh, task is to relate uh, this shift of X to uh, this small uh, epsilon. And then, uh, well, uh, you can do that. Uh, uh, so you, uh, what is omega of X plus delta X? It's omega of X plus the derivative of omega, right? Multiplied by delta X. And so you use this formula. Again, it's related to this baker hausdorff formula. Uh, and uh, you derive it's, that it's the same field bind. Uh, OK, so it's a metric on the group manifold. No, that was a metric. Metric is something which enters classical Hamiltonian. Now uh, you are interested in quantum Hamiltonian, which was the sum of all this uh, uh, differential operator squared, originally of X squared, sum or X A squared, right? And so uh, it turns out to coincide with Laplace Beltrami operator invariant Laplacian on uh, this manifold. Why is that? Well, uh, consider uh, this uh, operator, right? It commutes with uh, the A that's clear, uh, the operator of uh, left group rotations. But it also commutes with the operator of right group rotations. Why? Just because right group rotations and left group rotations commute. So we have an operator which commutes with left group rotations and right group rotations. And it's a mathematical theorem that the only such operator up to a constant is a Laplace Beltrami operator. So I have written here the separators of left group rotations, and there's the operator of right group rotations. It's also expanded uh, well uh, over x, uh, large x, with the coefficients which are Bernoulli numbers, but here it's B plus. Uh, whereas there it's B minus, and B minus is the same as B plus. 
the difference is only in the first coefficient, n equals one. Uh, so what is written here, uh, the only uh, uh, operator which satisfies this property is Laplace Beltrami operator. So it's an ordinary quantum mechanics, uh, sigma model, uh, quantum uh, describing the motion of a particle along the manifold. Now, uh, some uh, formulas. So I've uh, shown you the metric, and it's not, uh, not quite usual uh, expression for the metric on group manifold. Uh, in the case of SU2, this infinite series over X can be resumed. And then uh, that's what you obtain, some explicit expressions, right? for the field binds and for the metric. So this A is written here. And I mentioned here, so it, again, it's only interpretation. These formulas were uh, exactly the same formulas, but completely different interpretation. We already derived recently by uh, Kupriyanov, right? But he uh, considered this a, a genuinely, genuinely well-known community of geometry, uh, the ge manifold where you have what he calls Poisson structure. And so uh, he doesn't interpret the, these expressions as field bind and metric, and I do. That's the, the only difference. Uh, so with, with this metric, one can amuse uh, my, uh, myself by calculating uh, Ricci tensor and uh, the curvature, right? Scalar curvature. And that's what you obtain. That's the Ricci tensor. Scalar curvature is that. Uh, so it doesn't depend on the point. It's uh, the same at all points as it should be because it's group manifold. And the radius of this manifold is two divided by theta. That's what I answered to uh, Philippe, right? Uh, so it's uh, radius is just inverse to theta. If theta goes to zero, then you don't have a uh, curved manifold anymore. Uh, you have uh, just flat space. It's the limit where x, uh, a and x, b just commute. So there are normal coordinates on uh, just uh, in Euclidean space, which commute. But here, the coordinates originally didn't commute. And I interpreted it as uh, that they are not coordinates, but just differential operator uh, acting in momentum space. Now, uh, uh, there is another representation. Uh, for the same algebra. So I written something which is general, which works for any simple or semi-simple group, or algebra originally that was algebra. Uh, but uh, in a particular case of SU2, one can write another representation, which is better in some sense because it doesn't involve an infinite series and coordinates. It involves only three terms. Uh, again, the, <laughs> this formula is known, but again, with different interpretation. So uh, this, uh, uh, this, this corresponds to some particular value of field bind and some particular value of the metric. And it's uh, some metric on S3, which uh, was not written before. And of course, uh, it relates to uh, known metric on S3 and uh, the metric. Uh, well, I've written two new formulas for the metric on uh, S3, right? And of course, they all related to each other by a change of coordinates. And so this change of coordinates can be explicitly found. Mm, that's uh, the change of the coordinates, right? So. Uh, any uh, sphere in, uh, well, and also uh, S3 can be written in terms of uh, uh, stereographic projection, right? There's the metric conformally flat metric, which is stereographic projection. And one can relate uh, Y to X, X to Z. Uh, well, uh, y to, so what is written as Y is related to X and Y is related to Z. And from that, you, of course, 
can relate Z to X, right? So what is maybe a little bit amusing is that uh, in this uh, form of the metric, the point Y infinity, it's not uh, the North Pole of the sphere, so, uh, uh, but it's the equator of the sphere. For, uh, for example, for stereographic projection, Z infinity, Z zero is South Pole of the sphere, and Z infinity is North Pole of the sphere. And in this uh, representation, Y is the equator of the sphere. So actually this metric describes not the whole sphere, but the half of it, which is a projective space as O3. Uh, as O3, uh, O well projective space, right? Uh, it's the, uh, the group manifold as O3, not as U2 and uh, topologically or not topologically just, which it is the same as projective space. Now, uh, what happens with other spheres? Mm. All these formulas, well, there is a change of variables. And so you can write uh, the metric of any sphere in these terms, not, not a big deal. But the question is how it's related to some algebra. And for three sphere, which is SU2, well, uh, I showed to you how it's related to SU2 algebra, the metric. Now what happens for other spheres? Nothing uh, except S7. S7 is some special case, non-trivial case. And then uh, uh, you can relate it to some nonlinear algebra. So the algebra, uh, uh, which I written before, was linear. And there's a nonlinear algebra. Mm, so uh, the commutator of uh, D, uh, 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 A and DB gives you some uh, functions of D and uh, some uh, compl complicated functions of X, right? So it's some nonlinear algebra. Now, what? Uh, enters here. So eta ABC is uh, just uh, the tensor which multiplies octonials. So it's anti-symmetric tensor, well, uh, uh, of the third rank seven dimensional tensor, which multiplies octonials. I will just remind you how this tensor is represented. It's what is called phanograph. Uh, so well, there are arrows, meaning that if you multiply, for example, E2, the actonion E2 by E7, you obtain E1. And if you multiply E1 to E2, you obtain E7, etc. So there are some lines say, for example, E2 times E3 gives you E5 and so on. So that's some known terms in some representation. And this guy uh, at the A, ABCD, that's how it's defined. So it's just the dual to octonium tensor. You multiply it by, uh, uh, well, uh, epsilon tensor of the seventh rank, and then you obtain this uh, eta ABCD. So one can relate uh, this uh, S7 is not group manifold, uh, but the algebra is there, it's not a Lie algebra, it's some other algebra complicated, but it's some algebra and that also, well, was known, but not in association with the, the metric or well, things like that. The formulas were known, but with another interpretation. Uh, now uh, we are approaching this non-Hermitian Hamiltonian, which I want to show you, but first I will show you uh, some Hermitian Hamiltonian, right? So there is another model. So uh, originally uh, that could be any group, any algebra, and uh, also you can take reductive algebra as not as U2, but U2 with four generators. Or you can take, take UN with many generators, right? With N squared generators. And so uh, that's the algebra, which was studied by Gurevich, uh, this mathematician whom I talked with, with his, and his collaborator. 
And so L's are coordinates and uh, D tilde are momenta. Now uh, uh, it's possible more, well, you can also work in uh, these terms, but uh, I'm more used to uh, the representation when you have uh, just real coordinates. Uh, well, and then you can uh, find real coordinates. This TA are uh, generators of uh, our group UN. And uh, this D uh, uh, tilde are also well related to this uh, D tilde with two indices uh, convoluted with the generators, right? Then, uh, so for example, for U2, not for U2, it's for any group. And here, so I'm sorry, it's simple. They had software problem. It should be group unity. So well, it's just group unity here, right? Uh, now, uh, mm, uh, the representation of this algebra, right? Also, I go to momentum representation. So uh, this d tildes I denote as new coordinates, large x and large t. And then for u2, that's what I obtain. Uh, I obtain again some differential operators, and you can represent it in a way that there is no infinite series, and it's some close, a uh, nice expression, right? Uh, for uh, this TA, and also you have denote now. Now I interpret it as a motion over the manifold with the coordinates large x and uh, T, right? Large X and large T. That's four-dimensional manifold. What is this manifold? Well, you can uh, uh, guess already that it's also group manifold U2, but it's some in particular U2. Uh, so if you just do that explicitly, then that's what you obtain. You obtain conformally flat metric. U2, you usually you don't ex express it as a conformally flat metric. You express it as the product of uh, three sphere and one sphere, or as a product of three sphere and a line, uh, non-compact representation of uh, U1, right? But here you have, that's what you have. And it's not clear, <laughs> it should be, but it's not clear that uh, by uh, theorem it should be U2, but it's not clear by the form. But you can calculate, uh, also amuse uh, oneself by calculating the richer tensor. That's the components of the richer tensor, and then you calculate the invariance of the richer tensor. You can calculate the scalar curvature, you can calculate other invariants. And then you see that they're exactly the same as for S3 with the radius two over theta. So uh, uh, it's indeed the curvature is related only to um, uh, SU2 uh, component of this U2 group. Uh, but uh, altogether is some manifold. Uh, it's not a direct product of SU2 times T but uh, something like that. So it's kind of indirect product. So I just told you everything what I know about it. And it's not compact. If you calculate the volume, the volume is infinite. It's non-compact manifold. Okay. So uh, as so it's written here, uh, the components of the richer tensor are the same as for just three sphere of the radius one, two over theta. And so it's some non-trivial metric on U2. And now what happens for N which is larger than two? If N is larger than two, you also can do all that. But uh, earlier, on the structure constants, uh, well, were in the algebra, only F A, B, C, which were epsilon A, B, C. And now it turns out that also the tensor DABC appears. 
which is non-zero for higher SOM, right? Uh, okay, uh, and if that, uh, you see that it's image, uh, imaginary, and that's real, and that uh, all together, if you uh, will perform the same procedure as I did for SU2, that makes uh, these differential operators for momenta non hermitian then not hermitian and then uh, the sum of the their squares is also not hermitian so it's some non hermitian hamiltonian and that uh, uh, means that you are not able in this way to obtain the metric on un because you obtain some complex metric which has no sense now the question is whether this hamiltonian has some sense well you know you are all experts in uh, this quasi Hermitian Hamiltonians. So my impression that uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't belong to this class of quasi Hermitian Hamiltonians, but I haven't really started this question. So my guess is that it's not just non Hermitian Hamiltonians with complex, well, uh, spectrum, uh, but uh, I'm not quite sure about that, not 100% sure. So it's a problem, it's a question for all of you. If you are interested, you may look at that. And so uh, actually, uh, that's all. So it's not uh, a large, um, not a lot of my material. So I told you what I wanted to tell. So please ask questions now. So I have a question. Uh, may I? Go ahead. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, in the beginning, you uh, showed us uh, that um, Baker Campbell Hausdorff Dinkin uh, formula, which should work for all uh, groups, uh, UN, any N. But here you followed a different procedure, uh, which led you to this problem, to this non hermeticity right? So, can you put the finger where uh, where is the difference between the the first approach and this approach? Uh, uh, so it's another representation. So uh, what? it was nice. Uh, this representation was nice for as for you too, and it's not uh -huh. nice for UN. But okay. uh, you are right. For UN, you can consider it as a just uh, product of SUN and uh, uh, U1, and then you can obtain a real metric. But this metric will be an infinite, uh, will represent an infinite series. It will be just a, a conventional metric on group manifold, and uh, uh, it represents an infinite series on X. So it's uh, uh, just a delta AB at uh, the North Pole at the group unity, but then it represents an infinite series on the deviation. It's possible, of course, to uh, write the metric on. SUN on any group in this way. But here, well, I just wanted to look whether one can uh, find another representation for UN. And uh, unfortunately, the answer is negative, though for you too, there is another representation. The metric is real. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but in large and limit, for example, you expect you would expect that the U1 factor should be not important, no? Uh, good question so you are asking how uh, this complex metric well as soon as i up uh, uh, realized that the metric is complex i didn't look at it uh, further mm -hmm. but you are right that uh, this coordinates can be related by some uh, probably complex uh, well uh, formulas with uh, other coordinates which are real coordinates on un one can try to find it but I didn't. Okay. But uh, you are right. One can uh, try to do this. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Andre, may I ask a question? It's, it's yes. worth asking. Sure. <clears throat> uh, even if you are trying a much simpler approach, uh, starting from your compact manifold for the simple case SU2 or U2, and you are just, uh, when you're going back on your transparency 12, for instance. 12, okay. Yes. Yes. Here yeah. and when you are just going uh, to theta, purely imaginary, you will arrive at a, a non-compact manifold. 
So your mm, well, your kappa will be negative. Yes, that's true. Yes, and maybe for this you can just start with some simple exploration because you're here. In this case, you will also have a very nice structure when you, uh, for instance, when kappa is negative in this case. So you will have uh, for finite u, you will have uh, singularities in your in, in your metric. So some kind of horizon or black hole structure or BTZ black hole or something like this may, may, may be hidden there. Did you okay. try something like this? So you are asking what kind of manifold would it be? For instance, if you yes. just change the sign of kappa. Yes. Well, <laughs> the only thing be, I can say is a good question, though. It's an interesting good uh, question. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I think this is just the, the unit disk. This is a metric of, of uh, for SU11. Yeah, as you want, yeah, 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 sure, sure, yes. Ah, yes, yes, you are right. As you want, one, yes, you are right. Well, so, uh, uh, well, I didn't more, look into that, but uh, it should be because more generally, no more generally, you may you may end up with uh, the sitter or anti uh, anti the sitter. Uh, anti sitter, right. exactly, yes. And okay. Anti the sitter, uh, well, uh, three dimensional uh, anti the sitter. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, 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 I, I think you're right, yes. Yeah, okay, and did you try to, it's even more involved to pass to some kind of uh, Katsmudi-like structures here, to have something, some relations to a, 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 not well, a genus you one. You want to uh, take uh, as a, a starting point, not the usual Lie algebra, but Katsmudi algebra. That's yeah. what you want, right? Yeah. Do you think it's uh, it will a be simple example? Dimensional manifold, right? Mm. It will be uh, some infinite dimensional manifold. Uh, or it might be also a, a, a manifold with uh, higher genius, simply. No, well, it will be infinite dimensional manifold because there is infinite number, Cosmos uh, algebra has an uh, infinite number of elements, right? Yeah. And so, well, these elements of the algebra uh, well, are dual to the coordinates on the manifold. So it will be an infinite dimensional manifold. But I will ask this question to uh, Gurevich. He uh, might uh, like it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. So let me know <laughs> about his answer. I will check his papers. Thank you very much. OK, thank you. I have a <clears throat> comment and a question, Andre. Uh, my comment on the on your last uh, slide, when you find this non-emission representation, we looked at much simpler examples. For instance, if you take um, um, on the right hand side, if you have just an x square term, um, then the obvious representation is non-emission. It looks like, but there are much more complicated ones, which are in fact emission representations. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, yes, yeah, it's very I know. difficult to find sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what is your statement? So, if you have, well, I saw your paper, you have something quadratic in the right hand side. And then, uh, uh, what, what is your statement about the Hamiltonian? It's not Hermitian, but is it quasi Hermitian or not? Well, initially, you don't have any Hamiltonian. You want to represent your algebra. That's true. You if you can go. represent your algebra in terms of Hermitian, or non-hermitian operators, that's my statement. And often you just find the non-hermitian ones, and then you take these and plug it into a Hamiltonian, let's say the harmonic oscillator or any other Hamiltonian. Any model lives on this space. You can just construct uh, any model on that that's space. Brilliant. And if your representation is non-hermitian, then by construction, your Hamiltonian will also be non-hermitian. So it's exactly what happens here, yes. But so, but if you put in more work, sometimes you can actually find the Hermitian representation, which is far less obvious. Yeah. Hermitian and, uh, and then representation of the algebra of right? the algebra exactly exactly. So, so if you find... if you naively say I'm looking at a harmonic oscillator and depending on which representation I found I find for this algebra then the Hamiltonian can become non-Hermitian or Hermitian, depending on what space you live. Yeah. Uh, so here, uh, well, I was uh, scared 
by uh, this structure. You see, it's mm -hmm. real, something real plus something uh, imaginary. I looked at that and then I just lost uh, the hope to uh, uh, find something Hermitian. But uh, I, I may uh, well quit uh, uh, this quest too early. Well, I don't know. I have quitted this quest too early. That's why I wanted to show it to you and uh, maybe somebody of you uh, can uh, tell more. Well, I don't know. It's, it's, it can be quite involved. Yeah. My, my other question, this is really a question. This was just a comment. Um, when you have quadratic terms on the right hand side yeah if you take xp is proportional and you have functions there to x squared then as a consequence you get a minimal length and ah. that's more in line with the original idea so heisenberg proposed this to have a, a means to uh, renormalize theories because then you have a minimal length and you don't have to worry about small distances anymore because you can't reach them anyway. Yeah. What you're so, so, so my question is, have, have you looked at something like this? Do you encounter something like this? Your terms on the right-hand side are usually linear. In what, X or what you say, uh, Andreas, probably uh, relates to non-commutative field theory. Because uh, minimal length, well, uh, if uh, this no. x are uh, uh, just dynamic variables, right? If they're no, just it's quantum mechanics, it's just the uncertainty relation. Uh, string theorists like the, these generalized uh, uncertainty principles. They like this very much, but you can do this with ordinary quantum mechanics. You just look at the uncertainty relation. And because of the fact that on the right hand side, you have now um, a p squared, for instance. When you have p squared, you get the minimal length. Well, okay, so that's, that's also a comment. Maybe you are right, but I didn't. Uh, I, uh, I, 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 think, I think the point here is this if the comet, right at the beginning, you had <clears throat> the commutator of xa with xb was yes. theta times gab. Now, if gab is dimensionless, then theta has dimension length squared. And you, you can't you can't avoid that. You see, with XP as IH bar, you don't introduce a dimensional scale. But with the two X is not commuting, you must introduce a dimensional scale. Well, it's not uh, to do with quantum uh, field theory. When I go to the momentum space, then X uh, uh, well uh, when, when you uh, when I define new coordinates, uh, which former uh, used to be momenta, right? then this x has dimension uh, of momentum and uh, of uh, inverse, uh, inverse coordinate. Mm -hmm. And then theta also has the dimension of inverse coordinate. So I told you that it can be interpreted as the inverse radius of the sphere, but not in the original space, but in the momentum space, okay? No, and all, all I'm saying is that once you have a non-commutative geometry, you have you have to introduce a fundamental scale. Yes, there is a scale. Yeah. And uh, it may be good news, it may be bad news. Oh, and, but it's, it's trivial because, because in the Lando problem, you, you have the Larmour radius. Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not trivial. I'm not saying it's not trivial. I'm just saying it, it's, it has to be there. And I think uh, what I'm understanding from Andreas is that Heisenberg was hoping that that might oh, no, serve no, as Andreas a, was say, Andreas a quantum was field theory. Andreas was th saying something else. If you had x square on the right hand side, yes. Mm -hmm. No, if you have p squared, if, if you have x squared on the right hand side, then yeah. theta dimension. Okay, okay. Yeah. If you yeah. have yeah. x squared, you get the minimal momentum, but the p squared yeah. gives you minimal length. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but I wanted to ask something right at the beginning. Um, the original uh, non-commutative algebra you looked at was XA, XB commutator was theta times GAB. Where G and the, ver the very right at the beginning. Uh, right in the beginning, uh, uh, that was... Uh, that yes, all right. A X and Y is I theta. So that tells you that X and Y are infinite dimensional. Whereas if x, if the commutator of x with y is a function of is another x, then x and y have to be finite dimensional. 
I don't understand why is infinite dimensional. So uh, well, if you take if you just take the trace of the left hand side, you would get zero if x was finite dimensional, and the trace of the right hand side is non-zero. Whereas when you well, write the uh, well, no, no, algebra, no, no. You, you should write it uh, right in this way, probably. Well, uh, no, no. Once you introduce on. the FABCX, see, then the trace you, is fine. Uh, look at the look at uh, the last formula here. Yes. So uh, trace. Uh, well, what is trace? If you uh, convolute uh, by A and B, you obtain zero in the left hand side and in the right hand side. No, he means he means trace in Hilbert space where these operators are realized. Yes, I mean, the, I mean, these have, these are non commutative operators. I mean, it, I'm just saying that the trace of AB is not always equal to the okay, trace of BA uh, if A and B are infinite dimensional. That's another question. So you, when you realize those uh, objects on some Hilbert space, then yes. this Hilbert space might be infinite dimensional. No, no, no. <laughs> Josh, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. But what I was saying is, that was the original idea, whereas the cases that Andre was discussing, where the commutator was equal to a, a, a Lie algebra, uh, opera, um, what do you call it, structure coefficient, times an, another x, yes. there the trace is zero, which means that the operators are finite dimensional. So his examples weren't infinite dimensional examples, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with what he's done, but it, the original issue was raised about infinite dimensional representations. Uh, I don't understand, Philippe. So uh, there's the representation. What is infinite dimensional there? Well, all I'm saying is that if, 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 if the trace of X and the trace of a commutator must be zero unless the operators are infinite dimensional. <laughs> that, that, that's all I'm saying. Well, uh, the trace of the commutator, what is the commutator? Commutator is just a constant of uh, Vx and Vy, uh, v, uh, Vy. It's just a constant, right? Yes, but that's the, that's the thing that prevents it from being finite dimension, because the trace of a constant is uh, not zero. About what dimension you are talking? So these are explicit formula. What, uh, if I wanted to realize if I wanted to write down matrices that satisfied it, the commutator of X with Y is I theta, where theta is just well, a number, uh, the matrices would be, have to be uh, infinite dimensional. They're differential operators in the Hilbert space. So the, in this uh, sense, they're infinite dimensional matrices. Yes, yes. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's what I'm happy with. But, when I, but if the commutator of X and Y is, is a structure function of a Lie algebra, yes. then the commutator is zero. Commutator of and the trace of the commutator is zero, and the x and y are represented by finite dimensional matrices. That, that's all I'm saying. For me, in both cases, they are represented by some differential operators, which are in your language infinite dimensional matrices. No, 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 no. Yours are differential operators on a sphere. Yes, but here you also have differential operators. No, that, that, that one is okay, because that one, the commutator of x with y, is its trace is infinite that that i'm happy with so it's later on when you go to when you go to an su2 that you you certainly are, are moving to to finite dimensional representation that was all i meant i'm not i'm, I'm not I this is not a criticism maybe i'm just saying can uh, well how to say be a uh, maybe somebody understands better what you are okay. saying but, but, but differential but, operator but, is a differential operator it's indeed an infinite dimensional matrix in the Hilbert space but Phil <laughs> but Phil even even on s1 the angle is not an operator because it throws you out of the Hilbert space <laughs> the Hilbert space is only a space of uh, per, uh, uh, periodic functions and when you multiply a periodic function by the angle you get a non-periodic function that's true yes <laughs> so uh, I, I think we are uh, nitpicking here uh, things for uh, that, that uh, Barry Simon would care about or uh, it's uh, <laughs> um, he, he, do, he doesn't really um, care too much about the Hilbert space representation of the differential operator. I don't care. Well, I don't know. I, uh, I may care because. Uh, no, no, I mean, this, these are things that you can work out in the end. Okay. I mean, 
may I have another uh, question or remark while, while you were discussing, I remembered something, uh, something historical maybe. Uh, uh, many years ago, you think Semyonovich Fratkin in a series of papers on constraints, he had the, the idea of abelianization of constraints. So he, he, he had this uh, algorithm or some, some formalism that I give you some algebra of constraints, second class, second class or first class, I don't remember exactly. And then he, he, he uh, uh, would, would compensate, would, uh, uh, he, he would say that maybe it's like an analog of Darbu, Darbu theorem that locally you can always canonize uh, coordinates. Uh, and he, he uh, said that you can always at least locally abelianize your constraints and then use this abelianized form and the algebra becomes an abelian and then uh, it helps you um, solve the constraint system. And your, your procedure, uh, I mean, looks like it has uh, any, some, some connection with his work. Uh, can you comment on this? Do you, do you know that stuff? Or can Unfortunately, you no, not uh, Joshua. I cannot say anything. We don't know this book. Mm. All you can, all you can say something. Uh, okay, I just uh, I'll send a couple of references in the chat because uh, in 19, sorry, in 2016, I published a paper with some colleagues, Victor Ardaya and Francisco Leperu, on the quantization of, uh, of a free particle on the spheres three. And our construction was very similar to the, to the some of the results uh, that uh, Andre told, uh, told us today and just wanted to point that. It's and the other thing is that when I read when I read the paper when they read the abstract, he uh, he was talking about the that the quantization of the non-commutative space, no, uh, the the commutator of the coordinates of the Lie algebra of of uh, and the example was SU two uh, was although this construction was non non-commutative, there was an alternative construction in which is uh, commutative in in moment in space. No? Okay, he hasn't just commented some some point, but he didn't uh, explain it very much uh, about this. So maybe because uh, the second paper I quoted is uh, related on that the quantization of a particle, a free particle on the sphere S three on momentum in space, and we obtained very interesting results in the sense that uh, the <coughs> that the scalar product that you have to use there is uh, is a non-trivial scalar product in the sense that uh, you need the uh, a convolution uh, integral uh, for uh, to compute the, the scalar product. And the other thing is that I wanted to point out that uh, the the momentum variables that uh, he's uh, computing in the case of SU two uh, leads to the to the correspond to the Euclidean Euclidean group. Euclidean group. What is uh, Euclidean yeah. group? The Euclidean groups is just rotation and translations on, on the plane. It's not so, non uh, well, it's, uh, in, uh, it's uh, also SO3 when uh, uh, the radius of the sphere is infinity, right? No, no, no. What I mean is that uh, the, I mean, if you have it's, a look at the paper, you, you see that we obtained the, we, are, we were looking for the symmetries of the problem of a particle on the sphere. And then we obtain that the, the, the symmetry, well, we consider in a scalar particle, so without a spin. The other, the other thing is that we can, you could also consider here a particle with a spin. Yeah. When, you, when you talk about the a particle and sphere and the Hamiltonian of a particle and sphere, you can also include a, a spin, but this corresponds to the spinoidal representation of the Euclidean group. So in the, in the case of the scalar uh, particle on the sphere, we were looking for the smaller uh, group of symmetries of this system and we found which was a subgroup of the Euclidean group E4 in this case the Euclidean group E4 in four dimensions so rotations and translation in four dimensions uh, the representation are realized on the spheres three function of the spheres there three. is called Poincaré group well, well non-relativistic limit of the Poincaré group uh -huh. uh, well, in this case, we will only consider a free particle on the sphere. No, not to think in a relativistic particle. Just the Hamiltonian is that the same, the Laplace Beltrami well, operator that the, that he also he quoted in the in the slides. So, 
so it's, it's a Wigner in Ono kind of uh, contraction of the Poincare, Poincare group. When you have mass, the mass is the contraction parameter. Uh, the Poincare group at what kind? Because the uh, contraction of the Poincare group in the sense that going to Galilei group or going to... to the non-relativistic limit. Of then going to the Galilei. No, but this is, uh, our problem is different because we are considering a free particle on the sphere, not ah. on the plane. Okay. It's a free particle on the sphere. Yeah. Okay, so I see the references. I have to look at them. Yeah, you can look at the look at them and uh, in particular the second reference um, provides the quantization moment in space and moment in space and the interesting thing is that uh, we obtained it that the the so that the the Hilbert space is made of solution of Helmholtz equation because the Casimir in moment in space gives you Hel Helmholtz equation so the Casimir must be constant and this gives you Hel Helmholtz equation. And then using some ideas from Bernardo, Bernardo Wolf, who studied the solution of the Helmholtz equation, a scalar product for solution of Helmholtz equation, he obtained a, 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 a scalar product which involved the convolution kernel. So a scalar product that was a double integral with the kernel that depends on the difference of the variables. But uh, since uh, we're, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that's. Uh... Can you just, uh, uh, well, I can open uh, the link which you are uh, giving, but can you probably just uh, send it uh, to me uh, by mail? Okay, if you don't, if you cannot download, uh, I can send you. So send please uh, just the reference okay, this by is, mail to this me. Is, I will... uh, this is the, the, pa the paper that, that I see. Can... I see now your paper, but uh, uh, we will uh, leave uh, the Zoom and just, uh, to uh, keep uh, the reference, can you send it by mail, please? Ah, okay, yes, just yes, don't not to lose. Okay, uh, your email is in the in the message. My the email. Announcement. Well, uh... you can send it to him through the chat. Ah, okay. Yeah, but the problem is that he cannot copy it from the chat. Or I I, you... I just opened your paper, but uh, I don't, just don't know what happens when I will leave with the Zoom. Well, you maybe you can turn to the low to the, to pr yeah. just press. Just take oh, just take it from archive. It surely it's on archive. No, well, okay. Yeah, I, 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 can, I, can, I, I can I can find you by your name. Uh, I can find uh, this paper by your name. Okay. Yes. Okay. You can. It's uh, okay. I can. I can. Or, or I, I send the. Uh, or you, or if you send me the your email by the chat, I will send you the the paper. Right chat. You. Well, okay, I will do it right now. One moment. Chat, 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 chat. One moment. Chat. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> uh, participants, there was some chat discussion. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, cannot find it right now. Okay, I, I, I. <laughs> Well, I uh, anyway, uh, I uh, know your name, and that's enough. <laughs> I have written the my email. Here it is. Here it is. Here ah, it is. Okay. <laughs> and raise me. Yeah, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so here, any messages? Okay. Okay. So we thank Andre again. Thank you very much, Andre. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just uh, okay. sent my mail right now. Okay. Uh, uh, it's point uh, uh, rather than uh, slash. It's above. On top is the email as well. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Okay. Thank you, Andre. Okay. Bye, bye. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you very bye. much. Bye. 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 See you bye. next week. See you. Hey, Andreas. Yes. Uh, yeah. So um, 